Hey y'all, this is Travis with Hoss Tools and this is a little segment we do called Garden Goodies. It's just a compilation of short videos that we shoot on our phone throughout the week as we're walking through the gardens, harvesting things, weeding, doing whatever we have to do to maintain a vegetable garden so we can grow our own food. I really hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions, I always put those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them for you. Well, our sunflower cover crop here is finally starting to bloom right on time they start blooming a little earlier when you grow them during the heat of summer like this we got them planted in there thick rows three foot apart or so now, some of the leaves on these are wilting a little bit they that daytime heat around here in august will do a number on them i might throw a little overhead sprinkler on these later this evening i hadn't really been watering them any just kind of letting them do their thing they're pretty heat tolerant sunflowers are but uh they start looking pitiful i'll give them a little water so we got two varieties here this side of the plot we got our chocolate cherry this side of the plot we got our joker sunflowers and if you kept up with some of the previous videos we thinned out some of these rows on the outside some of these on the inside like you see right here where those stalks are super thick we didn't thin those and what will happen is the the bloom size from our experiences will be kind of directly correlated to how thick you plant them so if you space them out you get bigger blooms if you plant them real thick you get a bunch more smaller blooms which is not a big deal bees like to feed on them either way you can see a critter feeding on that one right there so that's a joker it's kind of got a yellow outside petal red inside petal a little bit of variability with the jokers we see we can see that one right there looks a little more yellow so sometimes the red on the inside of the petals is a little more pronounced than others we we'll go over here we can see these chocolate cherries and this has been a real popular variety for us uh, this year nice little pretty dark petals on those guys and uh really liking the chocolate cherries the chocolate cherries seem to put on more blooms you can see right there those haven't opened up yet but i mean there's just they're just loaded at the top with blooms so the chocolate cherries seem to put on more blooms however the stems on the blooms are shorter so i don't know that they would make a super great variety for bringing inside doing to a vase because the blooms are shorter unless you maybe cut them down at the bottom and, and put the the whole multi-bloom stem in a vase the jokers have a little longer stem on the blooms like you can see right here with that guy waiting to open up so these make some great cut flowers chocolate cherry has more blooms than the joker joker has a longer stem so it just depends on what you're looking for you might want to grow a little bit of both like we did here and i would say in the next couple weeks when all these guys all these blooms open up we're going to have a beautiful little cover crop of sunflowers got some really dense vegetation in there shading out any weeds sunflowers make a great great cover crop look at all those blooms right there just waiting to pop open and uh i'll have to show you another video when that happens just how pretty this is going to look and the bees are going to absolutely love this can you grow cucumbers down here in August in South Georgia in this brutal heat and humidity? Yes, you can. Is it easy? No, not really. So this is our row of Olympian cucumbers and it can be done to grow them this time of year. But there's a certain few things you gotta make sure you do. Number one, you gotta make sure you plant a fairly disease resistant variety. And this Olympian here is a good one. You can see most of our leaves are nice and green there. Don't seem to be having any mildew or any disease issues to this point. So planting a disease resistant variety is really important. The second thing is drip irrigation. Gotta have drip irrigation. If you start overhead watering these guys, a ton this time of year you are going to get some disease no matter what kind of disease resistance you have so you got to have them 
on drip irrigation which we've got right here we've been keeping them fed real nice third thing is you got to feed them you got to kind of make the plants outgrow or grow faster than any disease pressure or anything like that would try to uh, get them so you got to feed them real well <clears throat> now we don't have enough drip tape in this plot here just a few rows to really justify using our injector so what we've been doing is mixing up some 20 20 20 and micro boost in a bucket kind of pulling back that foliage right there and just pouring it along the base of the plants along the soil there seems to be working pretty good so far got some nice green leaves here so disease resistant varieties drip irrigation feeding them well not to mention trellising them keeping them off the ground that's going to help out with any of your disease pressure uh, as well as far as insect pressure goes this time of year we have to spray these guys twice a week so every four or five days i'm spraying them uh, one time i'll spray with spinosad and liquid copper the second spraying i'll use complete disease control take down garden spray which is pyrethrin and bt so we use quite a cocktail to make sure we can keep the pickle worms and other nasty hot summer pests off these guys but so far so good i did grow cucumbers last year during this time learned a few lessons and uh it, it's working all all right so far been able to keep them going just now starting to get some good production here i'll show you some of these guys <clears throat> so there's one down there you can see not quite ready now with this olympus variety one thing like it's been several years since i've grown this variety but one thing i had forgot about is this variety produces really straight cucumbers whereas some of our other varieties you can get a little you know kind of bending with the cucumbers this olympus variety makes really nice straight cucumbers which is good if you're you know small scale market farmer if you're just a home gardener and and want them you know easier to slice like that nice and straight so those were my first three kind of ready ones that we picked off here nice pretty straight slicing cucumbers so can be done just got to take some extra precautions and be on top of your game as far as keeping them sprayed for those pesky insects and any disease that you might have one of the major issues with growing something late in the growing season for us down here in the south is white flies white flies can be a major pest for us See them there flying around. They just cover the bottom side of these leaves. They suck the juices out of the plant. They really stress those plants late in the growing season. See them there on the leaf right there? Everywhere. Now I'm going to tell you something about white flies. The common myth is you can spray about anything to kill them. And how true that is. They're very easy to kill. Neem oil, pyrethrin, or any of your homemade recipes such as dishwasher detergent, alcohol rubbing alcohol any of those will kill them the problem with white flies is getting it on them these things are really mobile so when you go to spray them they fly up and they fly to another plant somewhere they're real easy to kill but they're hard to get the pesticide on them so what we recommend doing is spraying them early in the morning or late in the afternoon where they're not as active and they're more on the on that plant more and spray the underside of the leaf real good so you want to use something that's got a fairly high pressure. I always like to take my tip, spray it up, and get as many as I can. Now you got to stay after them. One or two applications is not going to get them. This is something that you got to pounce on. Another thing you can do in the garden is you can plant something like zinnias. Zinnias attract natural predators such as hummingbirds or predatory wasps. And those things feed on these white flies and that can help somewhat. Now the commercial farmers have some chemicals that they can inject into the soil on these things that will plant will take it up use it. But that's not really safe for the home garden. You don't want to use those on things that you're going to eat. So use those safe pesticides, neem oil, pyrethrin, any of those companion plant to draw in those predators and that will help you control these white flies. So on this week's row by row garden show which you can catch on our 
Facebook page or our YouTube channel every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll be talking about fig trees grown from cuttings versus tissue culture. And I want to show you kind of a difference in the look of the trees and why I much prefer trees grown from cuttings than tissue culture. So with cuttings, we grow them once the uh, once the plants die back in the winter time, we take some of this hardwood here and root it in a cup or a pot or whatever and then it starts forming leaves and then we plant that. The tissue culture, I think what they do is they take more kind of green growth, like some of this stuff right here, and they root it. And when you're growing from the cuttings, which these trees are here, you just get a nice, you know, kind of cleaner plant in my opinion. So with these trees here, I don't know if this is proper or not, but I, it keeps the bottoms clean and I like it a little better. I come in here, these are first year trees, I just planted them this spring. And I trim off some of those bottom limbs because I'm trying to promote a more, you know, vertical growth in this first year. Get these trees tall and up and going because I may take some cuttings from these guys. This tree right here, you can see, is a tree that was taken from a tissue culture. And it, it just kind of has this bushy growth habit. Not a lot of hard wood on there. You know, it would probably take me several years before I could take any cuttings off these guys. Just kind of that bushy growth habit, which I'm not a big fan of. It's hard to keep it clean underneath it and everything. I'd much rather have a tree that look like this right here. So this is all one year growth. This was planted in spring. They just take off better when they're grown from cuttings than tissue culture for whatever reason. And so that's my preferred way to do it. I got about 40 trees in here. Some of them were planted early in the spring. Some of them planted later. That's why some are a lot taller than others. You can't even really see some of the ones on the back end there. They're struggling to get going a little bit. But uh, I've got two rows of these with some 15 mil drip tape here underneath them. Got them mulched with some wheat straw to kind of help retain some moisture, especially this time of year when it's hot. But those, in my opinion, are good looking trees right there. I'm not a huge fan of the trees that end up looking like that right there. So, in my opinion, doing the cuttings, and if you can grow the cuttings yourself, just not that difficult, that is the way to go. Wait till you know, fall, winter, when all these leaves fall off, cut you some of that woody part there, root it in a cup or a pot, and that's going to make a much better looking, faster growing fig tree than those tissue cultures there. Two days, two days. With some of these cover crops, this time of year, you can get these things germinated in two days, which is amazing to me. These here were planted about five days ago, but they were up in two days. You give them plenty of water this time of year with this heat, these things can really get up and going. So we did a YouTube video on this earlier this week. And uh, this is a com combination of sorghum sedan grass and sun hemp. Now we went uh, thicker on the sorghum sedan grass than we did the sun hemp. We're going to kind of mow, chop and drop, and repeat with this. And I'll show you the difference between some of this. So uh, most of that kind of leafy stuff you see there is sorghum sedan grass. That one right there, you can see that's a sun hemp. So you can tell the difference between it. The sorghum sedan grass kind of looks like grass. When it grows up, it almost kind of looks like corn. And that right there, that sun hemp is a legume has a little different leaf structure. But from what we've tested, it can tolerate some close mowing. And this may look a little patchy now, but this stuff will fill in good. And if you're gonna mow it over and over again, like we're gonna do this, you wanna make sure you get it nice and thick. And looks like we got it pretty thick there. So once this gets up about a foot or two tall, we'll come in here with our push mower because it's got a mulching kit on it. Our riding mower doesn't. We don't want to blow this debris out of this plot. We want to chop it and drop it 
so we can add organic matter to this soil so that's what we'll do we'll chop it and drop it and we can mow it usually three or four times before it starts going to seed so we'll just keep the water on it early till it gets up and growing this here is looking nice and green which tells us our soils got some good nutrient contents to them and uh, the goal here is just to form a really dense mat of cover crop and that's going to keep any weeds from coming up through there kind of break some of those weed cycles and that's why it's good to have something that's fast growing like this sorghum sedan grass and this sun hemp here it can grow faster than any weeds can and get up and going form a nice little dense canopy there break that weed cycle and will do wonders over time for your weed pressure so on a youtube video we had a week or so ago we showed you how we were direct seeding some zinnias in here for late summer fall we did two double rows of these we got drip tape down the middle there and double rows of zinnias on each side we direct seeded these by hand because zinnias are kind of funny shaped seeds they don't really do well in a, a mechanical planter you can transplant them or you can direct seed them like this got a nice little stand there we got four varieties here so two rows and uh, each row is halved with a different variety and uh, i'd have to go back and watch the video i can't remember uh, where each variety is we'll find out soon enough when these things start blooming but i've came in here and i've thinned this row out to a, a plant every i'd say three inches or so didn't get real exact with the thinning i haven't thinned these yet you can see they're a little thicker i'll probably thin these this afternoon a little bit just thin them out a little bit when you transplant them which works great as well you can uh, do them on double rows or you can just make a single row of them when you transplant them you have to be a little bit more careful because the stems will get a little leggy on them and you have to prune them back pretty hard in the beginning uh, to keep them from falling over when they put them big blooms on them when you direct seed them like this it, they seem to make a big nice strong root structure and they'll stand up better uh, when they get loaded down with blooms so we got four varieties here we've got our binary giant mix we've got our cactus mix we've got our ice queen zinnia and our key lime zinnia and when these things start making their first bloom i'll make sure to to show a video showing how to do this but the first bloom let's look at one of these guys here will come out of the top right here probably when they get on up about i don't know eight to 12 inches tall and what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll cut that top bloom or that top portion of the plant out of there and that'll make them more bushy and also make them hold up better stand up better not get blown over so cutting that little top bloom out there really helps and i'll show you how to do that when that happens but we've got a good stand here we've been having to keep the the drip on these guys run it overnight probably every other day or every uh two or three days keep them nice and happy and uh with these double rows here we just take our little single tine cultivator kind of scratch just barely scratch the surface between those rows there to keep the weeds down until that foliage gets well developed and it'll shade out that middle and we'll just have really big nice bunch of zinnia flowers here through the end of summer on into the fall.